Hello and welcome to another Office Hours Capsule. That's right. Capsule. These are small segments of my Office Hours live stream that I do at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. Come join us live. Hang out with the chat right here. This is a live chat of YouTube and Twitch. Love to have you come in, ask your questions, talk. We talk lore, we talk news, we talk a bunch of other stuff. Kind of check in on Star Citizen time to time. Now, what I've been doing uh, quite frequently with these is every time we have a roadmap update or a monthly report, I will sit down and read them cover to cover. Now, I've, I've actually seen some comments. Paul, the don't do this. People don't want this cover to cover thing. And, and as far as I understand, people have wanted this because while there's nothing wrong with synopsises, synopsises are fantastic tools for somebody who has little time. It's important to remember that, just maybe this is just my historical background coming out, but a synopsis is a, or education background, uh, a synopsis is a, a shortened version of the full context. And if you're getting a shortened for, for version of the full context, you're letting the person who's giving you the synopsis dictate what you get, what's important or not. So by reading the whole thing, which I will have a link down below, I highly suggest you read that yourself. But if you read the whole thing, you'll get a little bit better. So that's why I read it from cover to back, kind of like an audiobook, as it were, <laughs> for people who don't necessarily have the time to read, but are able to listen and want that full context. So come join me as we look at the monthly report for February of 2023. Uh, but before we do, remember, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that bell icon if you want to be notified when these are released, because... That's, I'll be doing this. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit those things because that's how you get up to date on all of this information. With that said, let's get started. All right, PEU monthly report, February, 2023. Let's make this a little bit bigger. February was a busy month for all of CIG Studios. With final bug fixing for the upcoming patch alongside extensive feature and tech work, were released later for releases later this year. Read it on for everything completed in and in progress, including the Loreville rework, new water system, updates to Arena Commander, and more. Interesting. All right. AI Tech. AI Tech began February by completing the NPC Transit feature, which manages elevators and trains. Now NPCs will understand if a transit carriage isn't present at their location and whether they can move directly inside, if they need to wait, or if they should be press a button to call it. They will also understand when they arrive at their destination and will move outside. While the carriage, while the while in the carriage, NPCs will look for usable and idle uh, for a usable and idle there until they reach their destination. Upon completion, the feature was passed to design, following which the AI tech addressed feedback and fixed bugs. So this is an upstream team that's building a lot of this tech. This is something they've been working on for three months now. I think they started back in December of last year. So it's completed, it's finished, it's done. It's moved on, moved on down the line to uh, to design. So AI design team is now going to take, take a look at it and see how they can work it. But the actual tech of them being able to do those things exists. Now, does this mean that the AI tech like that, we will see these AI doing it in 319? Probably not. This is more likely part of this big AI overhaul that they're going to be doing for 4.0 once they have, or post 4.0 or beyond, once they have the the server meshing and all that other stuff working so they can get the AI from Squadron that they're building in there as well. So it's hard to tell, but it's good progress. The team then allocated time to improving NPC trolley usage. Again, with the trolley, CHE wants to destroy the whole universe. Uh, ensuring that NPCs can use elevators and move trolleys with them if the behavior requests it. Stop. Just, just stop. AI tech team, get some help. Okay? Please. You want not only them to pick up trolleys, which is a weapon, like a disaster waiting to happen, but you want to push them into the other buggiest thing in Star Citizen, which is elevators? You are madmen. You, you men, women, NBs of, Star, of CIG, IAI tech team, you are insane and you need to be stopped. 
Gosh, that was like that's like a like a list of the worst things that could possibly happen in the Star Citizen um, uh, server right now. NPC trolley and elevator. <laughs> Uh, to achieve this, they had to write new and update update existing behaviors and fix bugs related to path following while pushing a trolley. The team also finished the base skeleton of for Boyd's. <laughs> oh, this is Zoid's joke in there somewhere. Uh, birdoid objects, which will enable groups of small creatures like birds, fish, and rats. This required them uh, to implement new components, including a system that allowed for designers to write rules and constraints relating to spawning and movement, which were exposed to DataForge for easy access. Hey, base skeleton done. There's been a lot of information on this too. AI tech team has been working a lot, and animation have been working on, and art actually, have been working on a lot of creatures. So it sounds like CIG isn't going to be like, oh, we're gonna put a little creature in game and it'll be done. It's like, sounds like CIG is gonna be like, hey, here's 105 creatures we developed over the last two years, go nuts. Probably not that much, but several creatures in every biome, so it doesn't just feel as empty. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with Squadron as well, because a lot of this stuff is going for Squadron, as we'll find out next week when we look at the Squadron stuff. On the navigation side, the AI tech continue to work on cost area shapes that will influence the topology of navigation mesh triangles. This will enable the Pathfinder to avoid or prefer to use specific areas, as mentioned in last month's report. This will un initially be used to avoid fire hazards and define sidewalks for, a for social AI actors. That's that uh, people pointed that out as well. The 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 uh, sidewalks thing. That seems to indicate that AI will be walking on sidewalks in landing zones, and there aren't really that many sidewalks in landing zones. It could be for Squadron 42, but that seems to imply that they're building AI tech to navigate cities uh, that have roads. So that's an interesting direction they seem to be pointing. It's not confirmed yet, but that is that seems to be what they're pointing towards. The team also progressed with navigation agent type override parameters, which are used when creating areas to specific navigation constraints. For example, they enabled an NPC to transmit transition from standing to regular space to crouching in event. AI tech also exposed new parameters to spe specify entity pro uh, properties during the navigation generation phase. Now the designers will be able to mark entities as included, the default value, the entity is processed during voxelization, and the nav mesh is generated using the object. Excluded, one entity will be ignored during generation. For the navigation system, this will be the equivalent of not having found the object, ignoring walkability. This entry will uh, uh, cause a nav mesh to consider it an obstacle. NPCs will not, not be able to walk on or on top of the object. Okay. So, this, this, this again, a lot of stuff that they've been talking about in the past, the idea of being able to have uh, AI be able to crouch, crawl, uh, go from EVA to to standing positions, the, all of the sorts of transitions and weird positions that they're not able to do right now. AI tools. For AI tools, the team progressed their work on the Apollo, the subsumption tool, and added new functionality requested by designers, including master graph editing to allow users to select the default state for each uh, parent state, the ability to create new multigraph nodes, by dragging functions from the outlier. Support for comments inside XMLs. This is an engine-wide improvement. Support to read object container information related to platform creation directly from the P4K files. They also fixed several issues relating to resizing the node graph view. Work continued on the usable co uh, coordinator tool with the team adding support for multiple input types that can better specify when choosing the next usable or usable group. For example, specifying the number of usables required to determine that group is complete. They also fixed an issue preventing the usable group coordinator from working correctly with object containers and implemented the ability to add multiple instances of the same usable within different properties. Now, a usable, as far as I understand, is beyond just a 
something you can pick up and use. It's also like sitting down or anything that the AI can interact with is considered a usable. I think that even anything a, a player can interact with is considered a usable. I think that's what it means. I could be wrong though. And if I am, let me know in the comments. And this other part, the subsumption tool, this is just them building out the tools for making AI like subsumption and such. Finally, for AI tech, the team fixed and investigated issues with Alpha 318, including a problem with NPCs standing on chairs. Did you, though? Did you? You cannot stop the people's work, people workers, the people, the United Workers of Hurston, that's what it is. The United Workers of Hurston and their fight against the, the oppression of the Hurstons. May they stand on chairs and protest forever. <laughs> This was caused by an incorrect animation step of benches and chairs, likely due to a mannequin tag refactor that was not correctly propagated through the usable step. At least they're explaining why uh, AI stand on chairs now. Uh, and as chat's saying, this is the eighth time they fixed it. It's important to remember, and CIGs have talked about this in the past as well, is that there are multiple things that can cause the same bug to show up and sometimes come back because other things change. It's You're talking about stuff piled on top of stuff and top of stuff, stuff. So things come back often. Regress re regressive bugs come back often, and not just in Star Citizen and lots of other games as well. Uh, a great example of this would be the creation engine with uh, Bethesda. There's many legacy bugs that exist in the creation engine that have either been fixed, likely fixed multiple times, but still come back because of various other issues that Bethesda adds to it. So it's a common, a common issue. Art ships. Last month, UK Vehicle Art approached the end of their work on the Argo SRV. Sweet. The final art phase is in the is in progress, including the laud and damage passes, and is expected to conclude with a final gate review in a go no go in March. I think that's a confirmation, boys. Boys, girls, and bees. I think CIG is gonna be releasing uh, releasing tractor beams, ship tractor beams in 319. I could be wrong. This is my opinion. It is not what is what is CIG has said. They have said nothing of this. This is my personal tinfoil hat musings. Anything I say is not representative of proper space industries or any of it's whatever the Jared usually says. It's, 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 that is a def, it's a big theory for me, but that's, that's what it seems like. Uh, work also continued on an unannounced ship, which passed its LOD zero review gate and is well into the final art phase. Uh, that means it's, not done, but it's in its last stages of being done. After it gets out of final art, it needs its damage passes and law and laud phase. New variant in the in the uh, moved into laud zero phase after passing its gray box review in January. Detailing work on the exterior and interior is ongoing. Very interesting. I think we'll have to see what that is. But that's it's a variant of another of a ship that's already in existence, but they haven't confirmed that. Crusader Spirit continued in its gray box pass with a review gate taking place at the end of the month. Okay. While there are still a few visual uh, visual design tweaks to be made, the Spirit is looking in great shape for uh, for the review. That that doesn't mean that we're going to see the Spirit with um, IA or with Invictus. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it with IAE though. Almost certainly this year. The team looked at the Miss Cole C to fix any visual issues that occurred during its ongoing technical setup, while the Misc Freelancer is undergoing some interior tweaks to accommodate physicalized components. It's happening, boys and girls and NBs. We're, it's happening. Y'all, it's happening. We're getting a Freelancer. Freelancer's finally getting fixed. <laughs> Probably not entirely, but a little bit. Greybox and the upcoming vehicle progressed. Testing was done simultaneously on modeling process to see if the team can reduce the lot impact on production once they arrive at the final content phase. And I keep saying lot and not explaining it. Lot is level of detail. It's what it is. Lot zero is like an initial version of it, but lot is the stream, stream and stream out, like what kind of versions you see. Like very far away, your game is actually rendering just like a tiny little pixel. And as you get closer, it has different phases that it goes through until it reaches its final phase. 
So you can think of it as like frames in a, a you know, you, you, like a flipbook. You, you, you can kind of see something approaching as you flip the flipbook. If you, if you, the way you do that is each frame is drawing it bigger and bigger. You can think of that as kind of distance frames. Uh. The Apoa Santokyai is currently in the gray box stage and is undergoing significant testing to see how far the team can take the secondary motion. That's almost certainly for Invictus, but we'll see. The goal, is up, uh, the goal for us is to make the ship feel though as though it's reacting heavily to its inertia. During Doing this requires that we apply blend space animations similar to what we do with characters, the Eagle Dark team. Interesting. Aw. Community. Throughout February, the community team supported Cora Moore, Star Citizen's take on Valentine's Day, with a screenshot contest. In tandem, an update was released into the community hub that allows for them to spotlight content created for specific events, take over the front page of the website, and collate community submissions for events into an archive. Last year's Bar Citizen World Tour proved to be a huge success with thousands of players meeting up in person for beverages, camaraderie, and giveaways. We have started planning many more events this year while also putting out the call for suggested locations on Spectrum, community team. In support of the new salvage mechanic, the team created a starter guide to coincide with the Alpha 318, releasing to uh, all waves on the PTU. Alongside the standard uh, sentiment reporting and general communications and publishes, planning began for CitizenCon 2953 in Los Angeles, California. All right, quickly. Okay. This is where we get to the disclaimer. Hi, I'm Paul. I have no idea what engine's talking about. The engine has language that I do not understand. The, 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 uh, the machine spirits speak in, in ways that are only decipherable by the engine seers. The, 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 the replicators only talk to the Starfleet engineers and, uh, just in general, I have no idea what they're saying. So I will still read it. And if you have the translations, please do put it into the comments. We've had a couple of people who've been translating this in the in the comments, which is a big thank you for those people who've been doing that. That helps me understand a little bit more about what's going on. But yeah, engine, this is, I'm going to read it. So if you understand a little bit, feel free to do it. Most of this, I can almost guarantee you, is improvements or... Optimizations to the code in the engine right now. In February, the physics team made several improvements to box pruning. For example, changes were made to avoid bipartite, bipartite box pruning inefficiencies, to decide when to run box pruning before ob pruning, and to significantly improve a box pruning performance in general. Additional optimizations included using the spaceship's lo local space OB for IFCS collision warning sweep checks to reduce the size of the checked volume. I, I was I was like, oh, I get some of this, I get some of this. OB, OB is OB pruning is like objective, like or like uh, objects stuff like that. But now getting to the weird stuff, I don't understand. Furthermore, support for various. Unary, unary and binary distance fields operations was added to the physics system as well as support for tapered capsules, aka biospheres, on articulated entities. Lastly, huge pages are now used for physical enti entity factories. Huge pages is something they've been talking about a lot in the engine stuff. So they've been moving a lot of stuff over the huge pages. On the renderer, Gen 12 received a motion vector support to render to texture pipelines. Also, redundant copying of render target data for partial re, uh, refractions was eliminated. Moreover, the team spent time improving ultra-wide screen support, as one of the results rendering of the in-game console was vastly improved, resulting in clear text displays. Improving the visor for ultra-wide screens is still being worked on. Lastly, the CPU side code for scatter queries was optimized. For the core engine, further substantial improvements and performance optimizations were implemented for the remote shader compiler server. Work on the streaming system improvements started, and the final touches on the P4K version 2 support for internal development tools was being wrapped up, are being wrapped up. The team also started looking into more advanced tool support for memory tracking of both the server and client. The remainder of the time was 
spent supporting Alpha 318. Features Arena Commander February saw the Arena Commander team continuing to develop the laying of the foundations deliverables for an upcoming patch. That's interesting. That's capitalized too. Laying the foundations deliverables. This included further work on the spawning and racing system refactors and the delivery of the refactored rounds, multi rounds module, along with the long-awaited bug fixes and qu uh, quality of life changes. The design team focused on the conversion of a new Stanton location into Arena Commander, which will feature all of the standard game modes, bar Classic Race. This location, which we'll talk about more as we get closer to release, has the team tackling some unique challenges with taking PU, PU locations that will help ease the process for future endeavors, features team. Interesting, because they've mentioned in the past that they're doing Jericho Station, but they've talked about that before, like straight up. So it's hard to tell what that is. Maybe it's this next section. The team also began working on an all-new atmospheric dogfighting arena, which will be the fully first fully atmospheric map in Arena Commander. Hey, we're getting atmospheric maps for Arena Commander. Nice. Why am I? <laughs> That's just weird. Okay. Features, characters, and weapons. In February, the features team continued to support the upcoming patch release with critical bug fixes, mainly for crashes and player position desyncs. The team also began working at looking at lockers and how to best create outfits as a predetermined collections of items that can be equipped or worn in a single action. They're currently looking at a combination of the item port and inventory systems to store and display all to display large to small items. Physicalized lockers, nice. Uh, outfits and predefined collection of items. Okay, so that sounds interesting. For example, a coat may appear in a hanger just like in the shops whereas a small accessory item or a weapon attachment could go into an inventory drawer. So some things will be displayed and other things won't, depending on what the, um, the, the, what you put in there. So you might like open the, 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 the locker and then you access the inventory screen. And as you transfer stuff from your inventory to the inventory thing, like say a jacket, it'll just show up in the locker and then maybe like, they can just assign the drawers something else. You won't necessarily pull out the drawer and pull something out and then like put in your inventory. So. <clears throat> Another inventory aspect in progress is allowing players to perform a reload directly from a backpack or pocket. For example, if ammunition isn't directly available in their suit, players can perform a slower reload where it's retrieved from their inventory. However, this only works if sparing to ammunition has been stored prior to engaging in combat. Huh. Interesting. So no, no suit runs might work. Interesting. That's, that's a lot of cool information there. Features gameplay. The gameplay features team continued their work on the tractor beam, enabling ship owners to protect their ship items by locking them into lock exterior functionality. They also added an interaction to the gray cat multi-cool, which will detach unlocked items from ships to allow for more control over item detaching. Wow. Okay. This isn't just tractor beams. This is exactly what I thought it was and I dared not hope, which is this is salvage. The same concept would be work on a salvage ship, being able to remove guns and I think you can sell the guns in, in the commodities markets and stuff like that. So that's big. And then you can protect it by locking it. So you, you, you actually physically have your weapons and equipment and you have to physically install them onto your ship using tractor beams. That is great. The team then expanded on the hollow outline that weapon features provided to get clear feedback on the attaching rules for ship items. The QATR process for this began for this began alongside the QATRs for mining update, for the mining update. So this is happening the same time as the mining update. The mining update we know is working on it right now. We, we've actually seen some updates. So this is fairly recently. Like this seems to be, again, pointing towards an Invictus or 319 release of 
tractor beams. That would be massive. The team continued their work on the resource network, which is now known as the uh, which is now known as engine gameplay. Gameplay features will provide a more in-depth look into this feature in an upcoming episode of Inside Star Citizen. I hope. In the U.S., the PU team worked on the physicalized cargo refactor. This significant this significant conversion has several goals: convert the existing cargo render proxy to actual physical entities for each cargo container. This enables them to be manually added and removed from the cargo grid using the tractor beam. Convert all commodities, minerals, and harvestables to the new resource type. This requires refactors of the mining and refinery systems to ensure that they work with the new resources. Recreate the commodity kiosk using building blocks to give uh, commodity kiosk using building blocks to give greater flexibility with future changes. Ensure all missions that use any form of cargo, usually in the form of carryable two-handed entities, still work with the new cargo resource system. Work with the sh work with ships team to make mark all cargo grids to use for the new system. So this seems to be along the same lines as the resource network, because a lot of this stuff you'll probably say, well, a lot of this stuff already exists. We already have physical cargo. Yes, but we have physical cargo in one SCU boxes. It doesn't work with anything else. And commodities are different from mineables, which are different from refinables. All of these are different items in the game. The game labels them as different things. What it seems like they're doing now is they're saying, all right, we're going to take all of this stuff and we're going to cram it into one item, one thing. The game will recognize this as the one thing and everything will use that one thing. One ring to rule them all. One and, and one cargo to bind them. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to call this the Sauron system for, for a future reference, for those of you who are in the know. The, the, the Sauron system of cargo. Uh, or, or for those of you in, in the know with the you know, military industrial complex or logistics, the palletization system, if you will. The PU team worked closely with the EU PU gameplay to ensure that the conversion, uh, conversion worked not only with mining and refinery systems, but also ensured that the new salvage system worked with the new resource system as well. Once we had confirmed that the cargo was properly working in the cargo grids, Chris Roberts pointed out the fact that once, since ships were always destroyed upon death, the majority of cargo was destroyed, thus reducing the amount that players could interact with the new system. So we worked with the Arena Commander feature team to implement soft death on ships. This ensures that the majority of the time the ship is destroyed, it enters a disabled state, which preserves all the cargo within the ship so it can be retrieved by inter interested parties. Wait. This is really old. Like, this is talking about what stuff that's in 318. So are mineables now the one... the one ring? Are we now seeing... I think that's what it is. I think this is just fully in there. Hmm. Features mission. February saw features. Uh, the mission features make a few improvements to the Kleischer, Kleischer Rehabilitations Facility, including changing the stashes onto lootable containers, boxes for now. This allows them to put whatever items they want inside, such as rare contraband alongside typical sustenance and oxy pens. A full stash should now be should now contain an amount of contraband that can be returned, giving players another non-violent means to reduce their sentence. Players can now also steal minerals from other uh, NPC inmates, and should they do it enough uh, in the mines, get away without being caught. Given these new options for generating merits, plus the new escape mission, a new escape mission, and Platinum Bay at the nearest outpost, the team decided to increase the cap on prison sentences to further punish those committing numerous felonies, though lighter sentences will remain the same. I don't like that term punish their mission team. It shouldn't be you're punishing players for playing the game that you, you, you're telling them to. It should be consequences, not punish. Uh, mass murder now has serious consequences. So there we go. Leaving, uh, leaving an escape a much more tempting prospect. Mission feature team. Several unannounced missions continued to be prototyped, one of which sees players escorting ships as they quantum travel and land at various locations, potentially allowing for players to board uh, aboard to carry out tasks. 
aboard the ships? So we're talking about a mission where you're actually on another ship? That'd be cool. At least this is an escort mission, but of course, everyone's favorite escort missions. <laughs> Let me read that one more time. Several unannounced missions continue to be prototyped, one of which sees players escorting ships as they quantum travel and land at various locations, potentially allowing players aboard to carry out tasks. Finally, after in, uh, inheriting ownership of the reputation system, the team began designing out a system as a whole alongside prioritizing which work comes first. That's why we haven't seen any reputation stuff, is because it was being passed off to the mission features team. Well, gosh darn it, I hope they improve it. <laughs> it's one of those things that's very much needed for things like Pyro to have any kind of weight or substance. Features Vehicles. Last month, the vehicle feature team mostly focused on the transit system, which was heavily refactored for the release of Persistent Entity Streaming. As we've been pushing through the various PTU waves to release Alpha 318, more and more issues have arisen. Most transit bugs do not present locally on, match, on machines, so we've developed a system where we can remotely log the transit system and observe what happened after the bug occurs. This has been extremely helpful in finding various bugs in the PTU, vehicle features. For releases further ahead, new features were announced or were added to the flight system, and some older systems were refactored in support of one of the ship's team's unannounced vehicles. It's on. There's been a mention of a, a vehicle that has some specific features which weren't announced uh, that needed to go to the mission feature, or to the vehicle's features team to get an overhaul. It was hard to tell. Finally, the MISC Hull C received a significant amount of low tech updates as the team worked through its issues. Graphics, VFX programming, and planet tech. This is kind of like engine light. A lot of this stuff makes sense, but there is some still some gobbledygook, which I don't fully understand. And it's not gobbledygook, it's just Greek to me. Last month, the graphics team continued to close out the final tasks for Gen 12 before they transitioned to assisting in completion of the Vulcan graphics API. So Gen 12 is finished. The damage map system was converted to Gen 12 and support for profile groups was added to achieve parity with profiling tools in the legacy renderer. Additionally, the render pipeline was made configurable to allow secondary viewpoints to balance the desired quality and costs. Finally, legacy lens flares were converted to Gen 12 alongside initial support for HDR. Support for TSAA is currently being added to secondary viewpoints, ports, which will significantly improve visual quality, especially for hair. The team also submitted the first iteration of the new render layer feature to allow for easy customization of objects in the world for, uh, for use with game features such as scanning and the minimap. For features, the graphics team improved, uh, further developed several shaders, including converting layer blend version 1 assets into the more recent version 2, and adding usability improvements to the new shader. Various improvements were also made to the UI shaders, including stability fixes for anti-alias borders, the option to render circles on each vertex, and lighting support to allow planets in the star map to appear both lit and holographic in a single pass. For tools, texture processing was made significantly faster through parallelizing, filtering, and compression, which will be a significant improvement for the artists and build system. Work started on a new mesh format too, with the goal of vastly improving loading times and render performance. The VFX programming team's time was split between fire, quantum travel, and tool work. For fire, work began on decal shading to achieve a glow, burn, and soot on objects within the scene. Quantum travel has now support for the quantum casting and the redshift, along, along with various other code improvements. For tools, usability improvements continued and support was added for referencing particle effects from other particle effects. The Planet Tech team worked on better shaping support for asteroid fields, improvements to the harvestable system, and adding support for instancing to terrain chunks. Also, the Planet and Graphics team worked together on a new water system, 
This still this is still at an early stage, but aims to allow for GPU slash wave slash ripple simulations at, uh, at multiple scales, as well as networking synced impacts for larger events. Example, spaceships crashing. crashing. Shading improvements are also being made to achieve better reflections, refraction, and foam. That's pretty cool. So better asteroid fields, a new harvestable systems, um, water effects, fire that actually leaves soot, new quantum stuff, lots of juicy stuff. Gen 12 is being finished. It's, it's being wrapped out and they're working on Vulcan. It's all good. In-game branding Montreal. The in-game branding team's work on Lorville's skyline is coming to an end. They also began their work for uh, work their tasks for Pyro's ruined station, with the first step being creating the visual identities of the gangs and their environments. It's important to remember that Pyro, especially Ruin Station, is controlled by the by the Xeno threat, but there are multiple gangs who live on that station. It is a huge station. So sections of the of the station are controlled by various different groups. Interactables. The Interactables team continue to work on Pyro, creating more assets for Ruin Station. There's more work to be done in this mandate and we'll have some really interesting Interactable props we can't wait to share, Interactables team. The team also began working closely with the mission features on new assets the players will be interacting with around the verse and progress with flair that will reach players at some point this year. Very cool. Lighting. Lighting finished their work on the Lorville Skyrim rework, then moved on to Colonial Outposts. This is a significant undertaking with many pieces that we need to get right. Lighting team. In February, the Live Tools team successfully implemented the first version of the Entity Graph tool into the Network Operations Center, which is a major milestone in supporting the persistent entity streaming. The developers are still working on improvements for other internal tools alongside priority bug fixing in support of Alpha 3.18. Next, the team will start the design and development of the new op Network Operations Center modules for server meshing. So, working on, continue on that one. Locations EU. In February, the locations team completed the exteriors of Seraphim Station and the three station jump points and the three Stanton dump jump points. It's important to note that the jump points do exist in lore, but they each will have unique looks to them. I actually did a complete expose on uh, the lore of behind jump points and quantum travel and such, which I'll put up there for y'all after the fact. But the quick and dirty of it is that each jump point is unique because it is effectively a two-way window between two systems. So a system like Pyro, which has a lot of radiation, the jump point is going to have a lot of radiation around it in Stanton, the, the jump point to Pyro, because that radiation will bleed through the jump point into Stanton. So you'll have a higher than average radiation or different background radiation than you're used to in that area, which is easier to spot. So each jump point is going to have visually look different to the player, not, not as an identification way, but also a way of like kind of like the pyro system is probably gonna look a lot more dangerous, it'll look red and like like bleedy almost. It'll look like bruised in space because of the the effects that you will see from like the the stuff. We may, they, they've kind of taken the, the red shift out, so we don't may not see red, but it'll still look very menacing to kind of give off that this is where you're going into pyro <laughs> versus something like Terra which might have much more vibrant and green color, whatever. So this, this is important. The other thing to mentioned is Seraphim Station. This is likely not the case. It could be the case. I could be entirely right in this one, but I'm, you know, again, supposition on my part, almost in my mind, that's the replacement for, for Port Alisar. Port Alisar has been aging, and as gameplay progresses, Port Alisar has got to go. I know it doesn't, a lot of people are upset about that fact, but it's got to go. So Seraphim Station fits with the naming convention, and it was the original name of Crusader was Seraphim Systems. So that would make sense that their station orbiting them would be called Seraphim. Also, Seraphim means angel, or it's a type of angel in the Judeo-Christian tradition, so having it orbit Crusader makes a lot of sense.
Work is approaching the approaching final art on the asteroid clusters for the resource rush mission. That's the new mining mission version. And the team is working on the last few modules to close out content pack three, okay? Which will enable them to construct and distribute Pyro's small to medium outposts. Very cool. Tasks progressed on Bruin Station and the underground facilities, the latter of which are currently in the white box stage for, uh, what about stage? For organics, they prepared and hardened some of their cave in uh, initiatives and began looking into additional biome work. The design team worked on new missions for Pyro's outposts. They also began investigating towards achieving gold standard outposts, which produced several future requests to facilitate new and interesting gameplay loops in Pyro relating to resource network and reputation system. Very cool. All right, my, my bread and butter. Narrative. February began with the narrative team addressing a handful of issues discovered by the th thorough, thorough PTU testing of Alpha 318, with tasks for upcoming release winding down, attention turned to the next patch and beyond. Several items, clothing pieces, and vehicles were branded and named. Work continued on upcoming salvage, mining, and investigation missions, while improvements were considered for Bounty Hunting Version 2 and the Contract Manager. The team also continued to refine and hone their work towards gameplay in the pyro system. Seeing how the system's lawless nature has the potential to enhance existing gameplay loops has been very exciting for the uh, for us, narrative team. They also contributed with the environmental and environment and damage teams on building interiors. Additionally, progress was made on narrative lootables. These things like journals, articles, and messages that players might one day be able to discover and explore the universe. Sounds like it belongs in a museum to me. And if that sounds like it's something that belongs in a museum to you, then you can join our organization, the League of Relic Ex Enthusiasts, which is just a bunch of people who like to hunt down artifacts and put them on a museum. So just wanted to plug that in. That's really cool. I really, really like that idea. It's definitely something that fits with what a lot of people have been wanting, which is more stuff that fleshes out the universe that you can read or interact with. Finally, the team's narrative designers continue to work on expanding and improving player interactions with certain NPCs. Maybe mission givers? I'd love to be able to just talk, chat with random people on the street as well. February also saw the release of a portfolio explaining the history of Clark Defense Systems and a host of new Galactopedia entries. The narrative team also appeared on an episode of Star Citizen Live. Online Services, Montreal. In February, online services completed the development of Shard Isolation and the Shard Broker, with PTU testing beginning for both. These new features are used for isolating push workers and Shard Health slash Lifecycle, respectively, with the goal of being able to maintain Shard integrity. The team also added an inventory query catching, uh, caching the Entity Graph service. This stores the results of inventory queries in a cache to take the load off of the database for repeated lookups of the same query allowing for faster responsive times and less load on the database. This increases the overall read and write performance for the Entity Graph service. For those of you who want to come that translated, if you remember at the very beginning of the PTU for 318, if you open up your mobile glass, you open up your inventory, it would just be blank, and we thought it was a bug. In reality, what it was was that everyone was trying to look up their inventories and the, the server was overloading and it would take too long. So that's, this is basically, these are improvements they've made to 318. Effectively, this is the PES stuff that they're working on to improve the performance overall so they can get things working properly. The team performed a refactor for insurance, ASOP terminals, and VMA backend, the VMA backend and game code, with the goal of improving performance and fixing some long standing bugs. Time was also spent working on stabilize, to stabilize the Alpha 318 release with multiple bug fixes. Tech animation. Last month, the tech animation team was set on at Pinewood Studios, was on set at Pinewood Studios on London, look, working alongside an outsource studio to finalize face scanning to populate the remainder of the game of the gene pool for head generation system DNA. This is relevant to both the PU and Squadron 42. We scanned a broad range of models, young and old, from all facets of humanity available to us, which will go a long way to truly showing diversity in our game. 
The scanning went exceptionally well. Our chosen outsourced studio has a fantastic resource in their facial scanning rig, which delivered exceptional results. Coupled with lots of hard work and a good sense of humor, we made the most of our two weeks tech innovation team. So yeah, for those of you who have never seen these rigs before, this is uh, what it looks like. You're in a like a LED lit and uh, some light lit thing. Should you have, there's no shadows cast on you. It's, it's entirely like perfectly lit. And there are cameras that are placed, especially DSLR cameras that take, take pictures of your entire body at the same time. So they can get 360 captures of your whole self. The If you're interested, if you are a fan of Meyer or if you're a fan of Super Mac Bros, both of them had their heads scanned in the same way to be put into Star Citizen. So if you want to be Super Mac Bros or Meyer in Star Citizen, you will probably after this update, whatever this update comes in. So. UI. In February, UI art and design worked on several fe future features, including an interactive 3D UI prototype, a universal marker for the star, for the star map, and concept work for some of the updated vehicle UI st styles. The UI tech team progressed in various areas, including creating a color picker UI for use in interactive screens. They continued to help polish the new star map, star map, adding space dust to make it easier to per perceive movement, improving the controls and creating cubic hollow volumes. They also completed some workflow fixes too, such as improving comments in building block files and making it easier to inspect draw UI. They also made some final fixes for Alpha 3.18. VFX. Last month, the VFX team continued with their CPU to GPU particle library conversion. This has been a good practice for some recent new starters in the team, helping them get a better understanding of the many attributes accessible from the VFX editor. They also continued to refine the new quantum travel effects, and work began on several new vehicles, including one with an unusual thrusters. Okay. Finally, the team carried out improvements to Lorville's skyline effects, adding more smoke and general ambience to help sell the industrial theme. That is the month report for February of 2023. Going through doing a quick summary Looks like we see improvements to building blocks. We're seeing some uh, effects improvements. We're seeing brand new tech animations capturing more stuff to kind of flesh out the character creator. We're seeing stuff that was built for supporting and future proofing of uh, PES and server meshing. Uh, we're getting narrative interactables, usables, as well as uh, improvements to salvage, mining, investigation missions, bounty hunting, and the contract manager. Uh, Ruin Station's getting a big overhaul from the EU team. Seraphim Station mentions, which again, I believe is the replacement for Alasar, uh, and three Stanton jump points being worked on. Server meshing began, so st stuff working, or uh, the Lorval, or the live tool teams, I uh, started the design development of the Network Operations Center modules for live server meshing. Down that, it didn't begin just now, because everyone freaks out when you say stuff like that. Uh, interactables added some more stuff, especially with Pyro stuff. We've got a lot of graphics updated. Gen 12 is done. They're working on, uh, they're, st they're starting to move over to Vulcan. Improved some uh, fire, quantum travel, and other such. We see some vehicle features, uh, specifically uh, a new, the whole sea got a lot of stuff as well as some old, uh, some unannounced vehicles got like checked in on. We're going to see longer prison times for people who do more naughty things and a reputation system, which suddenly is preared out of nowhere is getting, getting now being used by the mission features team. Uh, we see some gameplay features stuff, specifically with the tractor beam uh, to remove weapons and exterior pylons, so stuff from exterior pylons. We see uh, lockers, persistent lockers where you're able to store your stuff and it'll populate based off of like what you put in there. You'll, the, the, the visual model will change. Arena Commander is getting a new mode, or getting two new maps, 
they mentioned, and they're kind of going over the whole laying the foundations section, which was capitalized, strangely. Uh, engine did engine things. <laughs> the arch ships, we've got, let's see, one, two, two new ships mentioned, plus a new variant, plus the Crusader Spirit, is going going pretty well. A new variant. Oh yeah, I said a variant. The Santo Kiai. And uh of course the big thing on Argo SRV. The SRV is is looks like it's almost done. Uh AI tools kind of improved a little bit. Uh, much of the see there. AI tech. We see the the uh, boids, the bird uh, birdoid objects, fishes, birds, uh, and rats being worked. Uh, they want to destroy the universe by giving AI trolleys and pushing them into uh, elevators. <laughs> they also uh, fi fixed all the issues where they now AI can traverse on uh, not just elevators, but also on trans trams and such like that. They'll go in, they'll sit on seats and that sort of thing. All that tech stuff was done. So that was this last month. I want to know your thoughts. Is this good news? Are you you have questions about things? Do you understand the the words of the Omnissiah and and the what the engine, the 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 uh, uh, the machine spirits desire. <laughs> Please let me know all those things in the comments below. Uh, and of course, let me know if these are helpful. If, I, if you still want me to do them, that's always good to know. Uh, and do this, put it up there, because a lot of people will say, I don't want to watch through four hours of your live stream to get this content. So it was like, hey, I'll just pull it out, put it up there. People seem to like it. Let me know again if this is helpful in the comments below. And as always, remember, hope to see you someday in the black.